Um, yeah, both of them are getting remakes. And both of them are getting remade completely differently. Yeah. yeah to adapt one to the times. Yeah, one of them will be finished, and the other one is Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is it. Two amazing games that have beaten every opponent they've been placed up against. But only one can win. Today, Jim Caddick, Barry Kramer, Gerard Khalil, and Shane Gill join me, Forrest Lee, as we decide which of these games we think is the best of the best. It's Resident Evil 2 and Final Fantasy 7, and this is Madness. Welcome to the grand finals of the PlayStation 1 Madness. It's Resident Evil 2 versus Final Fantasy 7. Kind of a surprise. Very surprising. I did not think that either of these games were going to make the bracket across the board. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You didn't think FF7 would? No, like, no, 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 not, no, no, not, no, not at all. Not at this table. Yeah. I thought I was the only one that, I mean, I'm the only one that's really passionate for it. Right, so I didn't okay. think that it would even make it past the last round, mm, but. Right, okay. In Resident Evil 2, I didn't think it was big enough of a game to make it through, I'm but. Surprised <laughs> Barry too. Caddy, I'm, I'm Caddy, surprised about Caddy, Caddy, on that Caddy, side. you poisoned the well for, <laughs> you poisoned the well so so well, for that matter, in the hey, first episode of the season. I, I G virus that bitch. You did. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. infected. Woo. Well, why is RE2 the best PS1 game, Gabby? Well, it's not the best PS1 game, but out of all of these that we've ended up going through, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to pick that one. Yeah. No, yeah, we're not voting, are we? Um, but, a minute in. Yeah, a minute. I, I'm very good at that, aren't I? I've decided <laughs> before even discussing. Um, out of all of them that we've had so far, I guess that is just the way that the the battle has worked, that's the way that's the tournament the way has worked. Madness works. That's it's how madness, madness. works. Yeah. And, um, okay, I can say that FF7 definitely has the bigger cultural impact, it definitely has... Well, yeah. I mean, both of these games are beloved, or else they wouldn't be getting remade. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, both of them are getting remakes. And both of them are getting remade completely differently. Yeah, yeah to not adapt one to the times. Ones. Yeah, one of them will be finished and the other one is Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, everything I've said about Resi 2, I, I carry on for, for for this. I mean, it's just it's one of the best survival horrors out there, as far as I'm concerned. And I mean, we can't really compare their mechanics because that's can't, not fair. No, you can't. I feel like in a way these games are kind of similar because they both have like controls that people describe as clunky, like the overall yeah. Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. and then like the gameplay of Resident Evil 2. And then there's a lot of going through menus and micromanaging stuff. Both have pre-rendered sure. backgrounds. Yeah, it's true. It's like, I would say Resident Evil 2 uses the, the pre-rendered backgrounds better. Oh god, yeah, absolutely. Because it sets the atmosphere just so well. well and you're so much fact, closer to the characters. Did FF7 come out in 97? It did. When did Resi 2 come out? 98? Yeah. yeah. You're so much closer Four. to the characters in 2, so it gives you, the camera gives you so much more detail. Both of the world. games have multiple discs. This is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> But this seven is, is more like, from what I've seen, it's more broad picture of here's the yeah, environment. Yeah, you're yeah, in. yeah, 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 yeah. Re two is like here's the section of the street you're on. Yeah, it's, it's like a very yeah, different yeah, yeah, perspective. Yeah, 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 and there. it's more detailed just generally everywhere. It's just like I will say one of one of my least favorite things about Resident Evil two is that they kind of ditch the city is the city aesthetic halfway through the game, like. Mm -hmm. Which, to me, like, uh, we're comparing other games. Resident Evil 1 it takes place in the mansion, almost exclusively. Almost, yeah. Resident Evil 2 takes place half the game in the city, and the other half is, like, in underground labs, and, and kind of loses itself in that focus a little bit. It's kind of a problem with a lot of the Resident Evils. They yeah. establish a really solid setting and then go, well, now we're going to go over here now. And you're like, I don't care about but that's, this place. Okay, well, here's, here's something that I've just thought about. So, yeah, you're right. You're very much right about that. But then when you flip over the campaigns um, and do a, the, next, the next disc or whatever, you... You expect it's just going to be the same game again, but different character, and then, oh, now you're being chased by something. And then there's Mr. X, and it's like Nemesis. It's basically Nemesis, right? And then so you're expecting the whole game to be the same, and then it completely changes, which FF7 I don't think would do, does it? Does it change well, it kind, completely? It kind of completely changes when Aerith dies. Aerith? Aerith? Aerith dies. Well, right. it's, it's not two games in one, though. Yeah. It's, That's yeah. fair. I mean, it's like Resi 35 2, games Re in Resi, one. Yeah, <laughs> Resi 2 isn't two games in one either, but it is it's it is drastically different enough. And you can play both of the discs in any order that you want, and it does change everything depending yeah. on the order that you do things. Gerard, in the 500 hours of this game, is there a survival horror minigame? <laughs> is there an incident uh, with zombies? <laughs> I will. I will not say there is a survival horror minigame, but I will say there are several gauntlets of of difficult mm -hmm. battles that uh, have a lot of. And I'm not saying survival horror as in like horror, but 
A lot of survival, <laughs> like, a survival yeah, yeah, yeah. mechanics. Managing your of, Phoenix Downs and stuff. Like the, the 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 Golden Saucer Battle Square is one of the more difficult uh, combat mechanics ever because it's like you want to win, you have to win cash prizes to unlock Cloud's you know best move in the game, and so you have to enter these impossible arenas that challenge all of your understanding of the game, and it becomes very much like do you have, do you have good gear, do you know how the fight goes, yeah. that kind of stuff. So it gets difficult for sure. Yeah. I find the scale of these games really interesting because they are on such polar opposite ends of the spectrum. They really are. They couldn't be Resident, more Resident Evil is super. It's grimy and intimate, and you're right there with them. Yeah, throughout you're the whole inside thing. every room and, and everything. Yeah. And Final Fantasy VII ends with a battle with a space god, where you can summon. Final Fantasy VII turns into contact. Attack, yeah, <laughs> he has attacks where like the world is destroyed, and this. Cutscene takes eight minutes. Mm -hmm. The, the, the scales are, are a little bit high. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Resident Evil 2 has a almost innate advantage in that its controls add to the genre of the game. Yeah, it's it like does, it does. The suspense of like moving around slowly and mm -hmm. not being able to turn as fast as you want, it adds to the horror. It adds to the panic. Mm -hmm. And, and um, whether or not you is, hit is, someone depends on your angle, not a dice roll. Is, is, yeah. is, 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 does Final Fantasy VII have like weird little details, like like plot related things, encounter related things? Because I'm thinking of all the things in Res 2, like when you're going through the police station and then there's just, it's completely silent, it doesn't bring any attention to it, the liquor goes across the window. And then a few minutes later, you see the liquor. And it's like, is it, is it got things like that? I mean, I think I think every yeah, it does. It it just it's hard to pinpoint because the game's pretty yeah, it's pretty huge. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, not gonna be used in that way either. I'd imagine to be like yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Resi, use, Resi uses it for kind of yeah. There's something out there, and right. it makes you think. Did I see like, that, or is that like, oh, like, you think you're safe? You're not. Yeah, safe. I think I think, safe. I think I think the biggest apparent use of of that for Final Fantasy VII is the weapons. When, when, uh, can we talk about spoilers a little bit, Final Fantasy VII, I guess? Yeah. Uh, Spoiler Eric dies! Well, not even that. Spoilers for a 20 plus year old game. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, uh, when Sephiroth is resurrected with the Black Materia, um, he comes back from the dead and it's like, I'm going to end the planet because I hate everyone. So he summons the meteor, and the planet, Gaia, has kind of these built in security mechanisms. And those mechanisms are the <clears> ultimate <throat> weapons. And the ultimate weapons arise and they say, we must wipe out the planet and start over. And so, you what you have, you, what you have is this, is this kind of like trifecta, this almost this triforce of of uh, evil powers trying to wipe out these group of people based on this evilness. You have Cloud and the team in the center, kind of as like trying to balance what's going on. You have Sephiroth summoning the meteor, you have the ultimate weapon wiping everyone out, and then you have Shinra, who is trying to. Be a corporate company and get involved, but also for evil intents and purposes, they're trying to kill these two things so that they can reign supreme as they have been for years. In that regard, uh, the weapons roam around out in the open in the open world towards the end game, and these things are scary. And you can run them on accident, and it's a fight that will not just wipe you out, but will intimidate you for the whole game. So kind of like that in terms of like. You know, subtle things in the background, mm, okay, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the ruby weapon, for instance. There's just a little red knob that's in the center of the golden saucer, and you're like, "Oh, what's that?" And you touch it, and this big f***ing monster shows up, and it's like, "Hello!" And then you fight it, and you get <laughs> bodied for hours on end. I guess you could hard. also, I guess you could also argue the box art of Final Fantasy VII is already a kind of like, because you told me last night it was the meteor. Yeah, the meteor. Yeah. The meteor for the game. Because uh, oh, yeah. I've because I've because right. I've always wondered what that was. Final, I've Final Fantasy VI. That. Final Fantasy artwork <laughs> in general. It does a great job of subtly telling you what the game is about, especially in Final Fantasy 15. Mm, okay. At the end, they reveal what the rest yeah. of the imagery is, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh. That's pretty well done. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and guess what that's about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, like, well, so, I, so I, I can't tell. I guess. Can't well, tell. You, yeah. you want to talk horror in Final Fantasy VII, what what else beats being in an RPG and, and sneaking down a hallway, and you're like, oh god, please don't, please don't, please don't. Please don't and then the glass counter. shatters, and you're like, yeah, I gotta fight another. You're thing. talking about encounters, yeah. just like yeah, 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 not yeah, getting yeah. They scare the, the sh out of me. Yeah, <laughs> especially, especially in seven. Well, it's especially like, especially when you like when you start doing things like going in the Shinra Manor where like Sephiroth is and getting towards the crater where he yeah. is, you you start to like fight these really hard monsters that don't look like anything from the beginning of the game. Mm. In the beginning, you're kind of fighting like men in infantry suits, like and robots. Then, big, and by the like, end, you're robot. And by mm. the end, you're fighting one of the most iconic characters from. 
Final Fantasy's uh, bestiary, which is a behemoth. He's big, yeah. you know, horn Oh, that thing, in, in that thing in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that, they actually, they took that from Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All well, right. I'd say 60% of Kingdom Hearts is. Lot, I, didn't real, I didn't realize there were that lot, many. A links, lot of so. the heartless inner, like enemies in Kingdom Hearts were directly inspired oh, by. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Okay. They're like their heartless versions. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think the difference, though, with that is you, you're, you're, I think you're right. You have got the suspense of the encounters and, oh, have I got enough health? Have I got enough resources? Anything like that. The difference, though, with Resi 2 is that if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. Right. Encounters are random, right? They just happen <clears throat> if they do. I they... don't think... But the thing about Resident Evil 2, though, is that encounters are not random because once you... No, kill... no, I mean f f FF7. Oh, okay, I mean FF7. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're walking down, you're thinking, please don't please don't happen, please don't happen. Oh, it happened. Great. Mm -hmm. But then the next time you do it, it might not happen. I don't right. know how I don't know how random it is, but yeah. but then, like, if you... It's pretty if, you've, if you don't know what's coming up in the next yeah. room... You and know you, exactly how many bullets you yeah, have you know how many, you can take Well, it's like, it's, it's not even, it's not even the, that, but it's even the saving the game. It's saving your progress. Do you Want to use that ink ribbon? Survival like, horror is the is the true root of yeah. Resident Evil to the point where counting your ink ribbons is one of the more uh, impressive it's, it's things. It's, it's, it's pretty hardcore. It's incredibly yeah. subtle. That's the thing, though. They don't bring that much of an uh, intention which, to it. Which a lot of people hate about Resident Evil. 2. I don't I, get I it though. It as a strength I, because, because well, it's, yeah, it's because about it's, managing your ability to save yeah, the game. You can't just yeah, yeah. Sa save the game for safety's sake. You have to be yeah, strategic. Because you could also yeah. you could be running out of ink ribbons, but then. Your health could be low, you've got no ammo left. So if you save your game there, you might have got an hour or two further on, but do you actually want to save that data? Because you really screwed up. You know what's coming, but you still need to use everything that you've got to try and get past it the most efficient way possible. You know, now that I think about it though, sim <laughs> similarly to that, how Resident Evil 2, I said earlier, kind of like changes locations. I think by the time you get to the midpoint of Resident Evil 2, I feel like the game stops being scary. It stops having the allure I, I that the think, game yeah, has because uh, yeah, yeah. you get weapons that are way more powerful. So that's great, mm -hmm. right? But you stop seeing as many new monsters show up, and it's kind of the same, the same mm -hmm. bag you've seen. Mm -hmm. And then, like in most Resident Evil games, or mo at least how I play Resident Evil games, that I if I find grenade launchers or or revolver ammo, whatever it is, I save it for yeah, the bigger for the, boss the, fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And the boss fights are relatively easy because of those bigger items. As you, like, I guess the game gets easier and kind of loses a bit of the 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 survival horror aspect, as opposed to keeping yourself on your toes the entire game. That first first act is like. The game doing that, or you being well, this, intelligent well, with well, this, like, this, 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 a lot this, of survival horror. This is know. the thing. This is the thing, though. With RE One, they they fix that by when you coming back to the mansion, you got all your stuff. Oh, there's the hunters now. Oh right. dear, you're gonna die. Like you could be dying three swipes if you're not careful. Even if you've got a grenade launcher, they're still nasty. And like like you said, you reach the halfway point of Resi. Yeah, it might get a little bit more lax, but then you have the different things in the next campaign. You've got the unkillable thing that's following you around and crashing through everything and chasing you down like Nemesis does and blah de blah de blah. So I think I think they do compensate for that. So it, I think it would be in the same way, like with FF7. I guess, like if you were going back a particular way, do encounters get more powerful as you get more powerful? Is no. Well, the thing is that the Final Fantasy VII has limited backtracking in oh, regards okay. to going back to areas you have been. You can't go back to Midgar and 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 the earlier areas in the game. Just but about the disc, you, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to at that point. <laughs> but um, when you revisit areas, it's not like you're there to do anything other than maybe Visit, pick up yeah. an item you forgot uh, okay, or okay. or find a secret boss that's there. Um, you don't really do any backtracking in Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. and the backtracking that you do do is circumvented by the fact, and I can't believe we didn't talk this at all, that you get a f***ing airship, um, which yeah. is kind of a common trope in Final Fantasy, right? You get some kind of <clears throat> of, uh, of a vehicle or airship mm -hmm. to kind of... Like speeds up yeah. traveling speeds around. Up traveling like around. Travel. So I, the monotony mm -hmm. of the game gets minimized tremendously because you have this cool sh with epic music and you're flying around and soaring and kind of going through the skies. But yeah, there, there not really isn't there isn't very much backtracking in the game. Okay, right. The side tracking, the side questing, the back the backpedaling, if you will, it's a bad word of saying it, um, is minimal and, okay, right. and not required by any means. 
I, I think what you were just about to say with Resi, Resi 2 is when um, Gerard was saying about you get more powerful weapons and stuff. Yeah. Is that due to the game's design or is that because of your skill? And yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Your, your, your intelligence. Okay, as a well, I, well, I think it is. I mean, everyone knows Resi 1, for just an example, you get the shotgun. If you're playing as Chris, you need the fake shotgun to place it back on there. Otherwise, you go into the next room, you get crushed by the ceiling. If you're Jill, you can do it and you get yeah. the whole Jill sandwich thing and it's brilliant. But, mm -hmm. but one, one of the cumbersome things, and this is something that has always bothered me about Resident Evil as a franchise, I know that the item limitations is definitely a purposeful aspect of the game, yeah. right? To, Item. Classic horror trope. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And I, I, I feel like uh, as the games got better, they understood how to do that. Um, but with Resident Evil 2 specifically, there are many moments where you need ammo, you need health, you need all these things <clears> at <throat> once. And in the, in Resident Evil 1, there are so many areas to swap out your items and to, and to store them and to keep that going. That's minimized a lot in RE2. Mm -hmm. So you will find yourself in a lot of moments where you're over-cumbered and screwed and okay it makes it hard uh, it's not it's, again is it a game design choice probably uh but it's one that to me especially in the lifespan of resident evil 2 has not aged well because think, you're kind of yeah. stuck in, the, in that center of like i need to constantly be spending or keeping things well, or, I, what, do you mean that the, you have too much stuff to carry is that what you mean it's either too much stuff or you have to carefully balance how much stuff you have I, like you can't I, put yeah. items down mm -hmm. if you're if you pick up a crank and you don't have a box to put the crank in, you're stuck, stuck with, with that, that crank. Yeah. And so you can't get any more health, you can't get any more bullets for any other items. You can't I, put it down, I, pick something up, but use then, it. But then, yeah, but right. then, but then, yeah. if, I, yeah, if you I find- I think I don't agree with that. I think that was a pur purposeful yeah, choice. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, because what, I, think I think you have I think enough, that, I think you that, have- Like the way you described it, it sounds like it heads to like, the entire planning and horror aspect. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's how much well, you have to take less, which is the risk you take, right. for grabbing the item that you think you might need in the next room. What I'm saying is that Resident Evil 1 did this Beautifully, yeah, no, it did. In it RE2, did. it made it. I think it was too much. I think because I, there I, were there were less <clears throat> less. There's the item box that comes with you across the game. Mm -hmm. There are less locations in RE2 that feature the item box, mm -hmm. and your traversal between one area to the other is is much more difficult. I'll tell you why I think that is. I think that's a world design choice because you're in a police station. There's going to be ammo. There are going to be guns. There's going to be a first aid. With RE1, you're in a mansion. What, what's the map size compared to Resident Evil 1? Resident Evil I think 2? It, I think RE2 is a bigger game, but I think RE1 is a bigger interconnected, going back and forth thing. It's much okay. more. It's much you more. You don't based. really retread too much in RE2 yeah. as you do in RE1. Yeah, that might be why there could be like equal rooms, mm -hmm. but you just don't spend as much time yeah. there. Because that's one thing like that is kind of sucks you out for just another random throwing in. RE4, yeah, it's much more action orientated, but then there's something a bit strange about you going into some random Spanish person's house and cutting open a barrel <laughs> and, oh, there's shotgun ammo in here. <laughs> but then if you're in a police station, you're going to find that stuff. Because... What about the snake barrels, though? Oh, they keep yeah, exactly. Yeah, snakes in boxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Didn't you know that Spanish people keep snakes in boxes, in boxes. with no holes? Boxes, yeah. no holes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's I well, think that's. Or so also introduced the the like Tetris mm. inventory system, mm. which was awesome. Yeah. Whereas back then it was just like, well, you have this many slots, and that's just how many things you can. Hold. Yeah, I, I do think that's a world design choice more than anything, honestly. These are both games I've not played on, very yeah, well, much. Well, I mean, of... I, obviously, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm I'm gonna have to pick Resi mm -hmm. Two because, again, even though I've been tempted by Gerard for many <laughs> hours early in the morning to play it, um, I haven't played it enough. And uh, what I did play a few years back, I didn't click with, and so yeah, I don't, I'm I'm just having trouble deciding because it's it's, <clears> it's kind hard. of the, it's a similar situation I've been in several times where they're, they're, it's two games where I'm just not very familiar with either of them in too much detail. I've beaten other games in both of these series. <laughs> like a lot of other conversations, they're very, very different games. Yeah, they're they're so good different. at what they're yeah. going for in different ways. Mm. I'm just, I just keep it's... seesawing back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. how to even feel. I feel, feel. like these, these two games, like these two games are like, you want to sit down with a, a 900 volume manga, mm -hmm. or do you want to watch a really good like B movie. Netflix, yeah, yeah, B yeah. Netflix series, <laughs> right? A Netflix right. B movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's also known it's, as a Netflix. You know what? No, it's, 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 I think it's mood, isn't it? It's, do you want to watch like Lord of the Rings or do you want to watch The Evil Dead? It's, the, it's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of thing. I think but. at the, I think it's it, these things are impossible to compare, right? It's so hard. It's very bit. hard. 
I think I think uh, it's even hard systematically to break them down. You know, music versus music, graphics versus graphics. Um, but I I don't know, man. I I think RE7 or RE7 is a great game. Uh, Final Fantasy VII yes. um, just packs a bit more of a bigger punch than than Resident Evil 2. Mm-hmm. Um, just from the music, from the presentation, from the gameplay, it's it's this, this, the narrative's huge, um, and it's not. It's not as complicated as some of the other ones. I, I honestly don't care about cultural impact. I don't give a shit about that. Um, I know a lot of people will use that as like their stable point as to why it's the best game ever. I, I just think that through and through, there's great character work, there's development, there's a lot of fun in it. What is your favorite thing? The one favorite thing from Final Fantasy VII? For you? My favorite thing about Final Fantasy VII is the underlining theme of the game. Identity. The identity. And that's an identity is a thing we all can relate to, right? When you're, that's why I loved it when I was younger because I didn't know who I was. I still don't know who I am. We're all learning, right? You know, everyone always says, "Oh, Cloud's moody and emo," and it's like it's because he doesn't know who he is. He's trying to remember who he is. Um, Sephiroth is the is the is the son of Genova, this ancient celestial being. He thinks that he is a god and that he deserves the planet, and everyone hates his mom. So his, his whole thing is like, "Well, if mo- I can't have mother." then the planet must die. You know, Aerith is this character who is like, I don't really, I know I'm an ancient, I'm an ancient, I'm supposed to be a good person, but like, I like selling flowers, that's my thing. And I'm I'm trying to find out what I want in the world. Yeah. And so everyone's, everyone in the, in the campaign, everyone in the side stories, it's just this, this dramatic theme of change and identity. And that's something that re- really just resonates with me as a human being. And that's why I, and, I just adapted to the game that much. And anyone who wants to answer, what's the, what's your favorite thing about Resi 2? It's high for the sh- <laughs> 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 The beginning was pretty hype, but I, 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 having I, having seen several Resident Evils through, like I, I a lot of what Jarb was saying rings true for me. That like whether or not it's true, I can't say firsthand, but that later on, like you're not as surprised anymore. You're in a new location that maybe you don't really mm-hmm. click with as much. That's true of a lot of Resident Evils that I've played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the beginning is off to the races and everything's on fire it's and you pretty, gotta run. RE2 has a pretty strong start. It's got like an amazing ending. Yeah. Or beginning, rather. So, yeah, it is hype as fuck, but it's like, I don't know how long the hype levels last without... Well, for me, it, for me, it lasts through the whole thing, but that's yeah. me personally. Right. Like, it's just... Would you say yeah. the same thing with like RE4 or, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I would, yeah. It's hype all I love through. RE4. Even when you're like in the castle on top of some weird contraption and trying to keep Ashley alive. Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 that's the... the... It gets real weird after a while. Teddy's totally. description of the final boss sequence sounds pretty hype. Well, I mean, too. if you haven't, if anyone hasn't watched it, just watch it on YouTube <laughs> for PS1. In, in the same way that everyone's been saying FF9 is kind of PS2, that is like next level PS1. It's so detailed. It's actually, yeah. it, that's what makes it frightening. Come and get me. I'm right here. We're gonna have to wrap up. Ah. We're gonna have to ask. I'll vote first. Yeah, I, I know what you're gonna vote for too. Probably yeah. <laughs> um, when people talk about Final Fantasy. <clears throat> They talk about its story and its music and really stuff that's less about a game. Story, you could have a good story in anything. What matters in a game is fun. And in the, in the, cape of, in the case of Resident Evil 2, being hype as f- <laughs> <laughs> So my, my vote is for the best game on this list, Resident Evil 2. I disagree with you at least as far as games need to be fun i think games oh yeah i think i think that yeah loads of developers intend for you to feel uncomfortable intend for you to take mechanics away and make you feel and and yeah. normally i value mechanics over story in yeah. most games but for a narrative experience and i consider rpg's narrative experiences i think the story is a significant factor in whether or not like I I'm not going to judge. It completely depends on the RPG. Narrative's not important in Paper Mario, and that's one of the best RPGs. Well, we can't keep talking that's about fair. it because you guys got to vote. <laughs> I think I am going to vote Final Fantasy, and that's that's mostly because Resident Evil is Resident Evil Two was hype as fuck in that little time we played, but I I don't really care for tank controls, <laughs> and it works in a survival horror, but just because it works and it makes it stressful Resident doesn't. Four is tank controls. It is. But the combat's but more a lot interesting. more optimized and Yeah, no, it is. It's definitely an RE2. I assume Final Fantasy VII? Yeah. Um, oh, you know, I, I think Final Fantasy VII is where it's at. I think uh, 
I, I didn't. I don't. I don't want to go on for too too much longer. But I think the thing that one of the best moments of the game, at the end of Final Fantasy VII, <clears> is the final fight with Sephiroth, and not the not the space monster one you described. The actual final fight, an entire narrative summed up in that one moment of like, you asshole, you ruined my life, you yeah. ruined the planet. That to me is hype as. F Especially when he's got the massive sword, he's animating his ass uh, everywhere. I hate to cut you off. So that's it. That, I just, it's hype as way over yeah. time. Okay. Jim. What's he doing? Resident Evil 2. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you stood up to lean in to whisper him. Yeah, because okay. it's now up to him. Okay. Great. You're in a rough space too, Lee, because like this is. This is the trope, right? Everyone's yeah, I'm gonna lose a friend today. Yeah, you're. you're <laughs> gonna, someone's getting upset today. Yeah. I think there was one thing in particular one of you guys said that really put the nail in the coffin for me, and it was when you said everything everyone talks about with Final Fantasy are all the things around the game that make it great, which are all great things: the music, the the art, the story. They are very good. But Resident Evil 2 is a better game. So, it wins. Wow. There you have it. That's it. Join us next time when we talk about this bracket. Thanks for watching. Would you buy this one? <laughs> Spider-Man is now out. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think should have won PlayStation Madness? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, and check out our post-show next week. Also, in case you missed it, check out the Losers Finals for more Madness content.